Today we are talking about Cesium-137. What I have here is our Cesium-137 stock solution, a highly concentrated solution of a very radioactive isotope. As you can see it is stored in a lead container which itself remains behind a thick lead door. Pure uranium is nothing compared to this. We will measure its radioactivity in a moment. But first let's talk about this very sample. It's a cesium-137 cesium chloride solution in a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. As you can see most of the solution has been used up and what it has been used for will become clear in the end of the video. The gamma dose rate even inside the lead container it registers around 241 microsieverts an hour which is about 2000 times the normal background radiation. Without the lead shielding we can measure a dose rate of 1.94 millisieverts an hour. Nearly double the annual radiation exposure limit in just one hour. No this nitro glove I'm wearing won't protect my fingers from the radiation at all. I will just hurry with the measurements. I store it behind a lead shield in between the shots and as you can see the contamination monitor reacts as soon as I take it out of this lead shielding. That's something I haven't seen before. I've maxed out the contamination monitor with 31,000 ips which is equal to 1.86 million cpm for the Americans. Oh okay enough playing around with it. Season 137 has a relatively long half-life with about 30 years especially for a neutron rich nuclei. This is because the beta minus decay it undergoes is forbidden. The cesium-137 nucleus has a spin of plus 7 halves, while the daughter nucleus barium-137m has a spin of minus 11 halves. This results in a delta j of 4 halves, meaning it has to change angular momentum alongside a change of parity from plus to minus. The transition into barium-137g has also a delta j of 2, but there is no change in parity, making this transition doubly forbidden. Don't worry there are tables for this. The key point is both transitions are somehow forbidden but the one leading into the metastable barium 137m is less forbidden which is why it happens 95% of the time. Because both transitions are forbidden the season 137 has a long half-life. We can clearly see a 661 kilo electron volt gamma photon from the decay of season 137 into barium 137g. This can be confirmed by the Geely. Now where does cesium-137 come from? It is formed as one of the heavier fission products during nuclear fission. Whether it's in a nuclear weapon or a reactor melton like in Chernobyl or Fukushima. Cesium-137 alongside strontium-90 is typically one of the top candidates when it comes to radioactive contamination. Cesium-137 is a problematic substance for several reasons. Its 30 year long half-life means that it stays for at least 300 years which is an extremely long time for humans. Yet 30 years is still long enough for even small amounts to be highly radioactive and have severe biological consequences due to the radiation exposure. On a gram to gram basis season 137 has an activity that is 300 million times higher than the well known radioisotope uranium 238. Another reason why season 137 is problematic is that it's much more volatile compared to uranium which is also released in a nuclear accident. So not only is it highly radioactive and long lived but it also disperses easily. And the best part it is a chemical relative to the potassium which living organism including humans absolutely love. This means that it disperses quickly into the environment and inside the human body. The only good thing about this is that the biological half-life is not really long meaning it gets excreted quite quickly. To be honest that doesn't make a huge difference. So why would you bring this substance into a laboratory to find solution for this very problems? For example researchers are working on purifying the water contaminated by Chernobyl and Fukushima. Currently potassium hexacyanophorate is used for it but it can't be reused once it has absorbed the cesium. For example researchers in our university investigated whether some uranium based MOFs metal organic frameworks could serve as a reusable ion exchanger. This could be used in the tanks 
contaminated by Fukushima water helping to remove cesium-137 ions. Now that the research has been carried out, the cesium-137 stock solution has mostly been used up. Given its long half-life and the fact that cesium-137 stock solution is quite expensive, recycling in the future makes sense. To provide a price comparison, the cost including the shipment was about 670 euros. With that being said, goodbye.